Today I'm going to be demonstrating the techniques that I use when I am working over the horn of the anvil. I really don't do a lot of work over the horn, but there are times when you need to shape a curved piece that can't be set flat on an anvil. So you need the horn to be able to fit up inside of the piece to support the shaping that you're doing. Some people do use the horn to draw down metal, but I don't do that. I don't feel the horn is all that well supported and I prefer to draw down metal on the face of the anvil, so I just use the horn for shaping. Now the horn is an area of the anvil that just seems so obvious that there really doesn't seem to be much that you know you could talk about to explain how to use it. And it is very straightforward if you're just working a piece of round bar over the curved surface of the horn. You just pick a section of the horn that seems to have the radius that you're after and then you hammer the round bar around that part of the horn. When you're using a round bar it doesn't really matter where you're working on the horn. The point of contact is always on the center line of that bar. So it's fairly easy to make a straight ring that doesn't have any distortion. The problem comes when you start working a piece of flat bar over the horn. If you start hammering a piece of flat bar flat up against the horn, the piece is going to develop a twist as it wraps around the horn because it's trying to conform to all the curved shapes of the horn. The chalk mark that I have drawn on this horn represents the line that I need to follow if I want to forge a ring that doesn't have any distortion or veer off in any way. And you can see how the bottom edge of the bend is really starting to develop a twist. And that twist can be fairly dramatic and hard to correct because you've stretched one edge of the metal that wasn't supposed to be stretched. So correcting that twist can cause even more distortion because now it's not just a matter of putting the thing back straight. You have two edges of that shape that have different lengths. So here's basically the problem. To get a curved section that's fairly uniform on the horn, you need to be holding the piece at 90 degrees to the anvil. If I take cross sections along the horn in several places, I'm going to get curved shapes that are fairly uniform. They may not be perfectly round, but they basically conform to a radius. So I need to follow one of these lines to get a shape that isn't distorted. Now if I hold a piece of flat bar at 90 degrees to the anvil face, this is basically what I'm getting. I'm just going to get one edge resting on the horn. In order to keep the curve running true, I need to follow the line that I have drawn on the right hand side of the flat bar and maintain the spacing that I have on the left. If I start hammering the left side of the flat bar down to the horn, it's going to start twisting out of shape because it's trying to conform to that taper. And the angle of that taper is constantly changing as you follow the different radiuses around the horn. So my method of hammering a flat bar around the horn is to place the bar on the horn at 90 degrees to the anvil. Make sure that the hammer face is parallel to the anvil and hammer around the horn. I'm using the right hand edge as the guide for the radius that I'm looking for. And then the flat face of the hammer is just keeping everything else in line. This is another example of where blacksmithing is more about controlled hammering than just bashing away at something. If you start swinging away too hard at this, you're not going to be able to keep the proper relationship between the hammer and the anvil horn. And you're going to cause some distortion that you're just going to need to correct later on. So the key is to really take your time just hammer hard enough to get the shape bent around the horn but not so hard that you start creating problems for yourself later on. Of course you need to keep this relationship between the hammer and the horn regardless of where you're working on the horn. And that can get a little challenging as you move towards the tip and the horn quite often really starts to drop off dramatically.
here I'm just using the end of the bar to give you a cross-sectional kind of view to show you the relationship between the bar, the hammer, and the horn. I've placed it underneath the horn because that's the steepest part of the curb, but you can still see how the principle needs to stay the same if you want to forge a curve that's smooth and without any distortion. It's all about picking a radius that you're working to and then making sure that that bar stays true to that radius. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. As most of you know, for the past few years I've been producing YouTube videos on a part-time basis. I am now looking to turn that hobby into a full-time job and for that I really need your help. A small monthly contribution from a really small number of viewers will generate the income that I need to achieve that goal. So if you're interested in the work that I'm doing and you want to lend your support, please click on the Patreon icon at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. We'll see you next time.